What's this? Hello and welcome to our next video. Look at this device. What can that be? This is a measurement device. It does not really look like a measurement device. This is because it's not complete. But what does it measure? Maybe diameter or whatever? No. This is one example of our next topic. We are measuring the flow. Flow. Measurement. Okay. We have a tube. We want to know how many cubic meters per second the flow is there. This thing helps. This thing is one principle of flow measurement. The first thing we are going to discuss, that's the differential pressure. Differential pressure differential pressure method of flow measurement. So how is this working? How can this thing help? Just make a short explanation. We do have a tube. There's a flange. And there's the next the next tube. The tube has a diameter D. And here, in here, I'm using this thing here. And I'm using this if this is the flow direction, if this is the flow direction, and I want to know how many how many cubic meters per inch, then I put it in that way. So that here on on the downstream side, let's say, is this phase. Yeah. On the other side, it's a sharp edge. This will be put in here. Yeah. Will then look like this. Clack, clack. Yeah. What happens? What happens in this case? Here the medium is streaming and here it needs to pass through a much smaller diameter yeah? and here it will get it will open again. Okay? Here we will have some vortex Maybe here also, yeah. but basically this is how it looks like. What happens here? Yeah. I mean, let's say here are running 10 liters per second, then here also 10 liters per second must come out. What comes in must come out, of course, yeah, and here. In this area, in this area, there are also 10 liters per second. Why should there be less? Yeah? They need to pass it. Here we have big diameter, here we have small diameter. Here the liquid will flow uh, not that fast, and here the liquid will flow much faster, yeah? depending on the areas. If it's twice, if it's just half the area, then it must run twice as fast. Okay. And you've heard in mechanics, yeah, you've heard in mechanics something about Bernoulli, yeah, the Bernoulli equation. Yeah. This means the energy which is stored in a liquid, yeah, the energy is one time the moving energy, yeah, that's the mass multiplied by the velocity squared and half that's that's the kinetic energy or the movement energy k 
kinetic energy. Okay. Kinetic energy, one term. Then we do have potential energy, that's one side the pressure multiplied by the volume which is inside there. Yeah. Pressure energy. Yeah. And then of course we would have we would also have if we have height differences, yeah, we would have the real potential energy. So uh Earth acceleration, then mass and height, yeah, head. If there is a head difference between, that's the potential energy or the Lage, Lage energy. Yeah. Potential energy. Okay. If I now divide this by one second, yeah, then I get the power. This divided by one is still the same. Yeah, m forward that two multiplied by one second plus, and here volume divided by time is volume flow. This is what I'm interested in, and here we also have divided by one second. So this one, I can. It's just for the. It's just for the. Uh, unit that it works. Yeah. So the mass yeah. the mass is nothing more than the density of the liquid multiplied by the volume yeah. and the velocity of the liquid is the volume flow divided by the area. Yeah. Cubic meters per second, square meters, meters per second. Working. Yeah. Kilogram by cubic meter, cubic meter, only kilogram. These are the things. And if I all put them in, yeah, uh, then I can calculate I have an equation just in V point, yeah, just in volume flow. Okay. Now, from from the principle, it's rather easy. If here we have some energy inside our liquid, then we must have the same energy here. Okay. Here it's faster, so this means the kinetic energy is bigger. Yeah. And if the kinetic, if this is constant, yeah, and let's say the height is also constant, yeah, then the pressure energy must drop. So this means the pressure here, where it's running faster, must be lower. Yeah. So if I measure the pressure here, and I measure the pressure behind the orifice. Yeah, if I measure the pressure behind the orifice and before the orifice, then I measure a pressure difference. Okay. This pressure difference is because of different flows, uh, velocities. Yeah. And if I s now do the math, yeah, then I realize, okay, hey, the measured pressure difference, the measured pressure difference is a uh, relevant to this v point squared so we have a relationship between the volume flow and the pressure difference this is some um, not linear but however i have one yeah. you can do it also also in the in your script it's done yeah you can read through it but that's the basic principle okay that's the basic principle of those differential pressure measurement systems. This is then how it would look like if we are uh, build it in. Yeah. Here you can see 
there is the direction yeah here is the orifice building yeah we can exchange those orifices with different diameters yeah? that's what they are for and here you see we do have here hello 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 one measurement line a second measurement line one measurement line is coming before that's the that's the hole huh? is coming before uh, the orifice and one of it is coming from behind huh? so if i measure the differential pressure between here and here it's working fine huh? and it's even marked that's the plus side so here we have more pressure that's the minus side we have less that's the minus side here we have less pressure and that's the flow direction okay so if it's built in in my in my tube system yeah, then i can measure here i measure the differential pressure and i know that the uh, rear flow is depending on this differential pressure by quadratic equation there is also a great video explaining this. There is a great video explaining this. I will put put a link in it. Yeah, so with animation and so on. Disadvantage. Yeah? I mean, the advantage. The advantage is rather rather logical, right? It's there are no moving parts. It's adaptable for different D's. Yeah, and. It's for most of liquids and fluids, gases and so and so on. It's it's working, yeah, and it's a known principle. Yeah? Here we need to have some straight line, yeah, before the measurement, which is let's say five times the diameter to up to eighty, depending depending a little bit on the on the liquid or material and so on and on the on the sizes and here afterwards we need to have a straight line for about four times the diameter uh, up to eight times the diameter so that's maybe you should know okay if there is so much uh, advantage of these things what is the disadvantage yeah what is the disadvantage the disadvantage is of course this squared yeah so that we don't have a linear linear thing yeah since we have if there are pressure pulsations in yeah then we do have an issue because then we do have uh, an error in our measurement yeah also density changes would cause something yeah because here in the mass i have the density inside these things are relatively long yeah you have we have really to take care that these things are there the overall the overall uh, accuracy the overall the overall accuracy is not that uh, great let's say yeah so we are around uh, 0.6 that's very good yeah up to two percent of the uh, end value yeah so for low for low flows this is not working as well not very good it's clear because then the velocity difference is not that high and with these quadratic things low things are not working very well yeah and the main thing is that here i have friction yeah I have too much friction inside and this means I have a, a, a remaining pressure loss. So if I measure the pressure here and measure the pressure here where the pressure should be equal, I have still a remaining loss. Remaining loss yeah, delta P. This delta P is then transferred to heat and go to somewhere. Okay? This is the remaining loss that's the big 
big, big, big disadvantage of this method. Yeah? To get this better, there are also things which look like they are not only the orifices, they are also then things which look like this, have a special form. Yeah? They are called nozzles. Yeah? Nozzles. They produce a little less as permanent pressure loss, pressure loss. Yeah, and then there are things which really go gentle down and then very gentle up again. These are called venturi tubes. Okay, venturi tubes. So these are the different different things. So I have here this orifice, here we have a nozzle, and here we have a venturi tube. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's the flow measurement on differential pressure. Yeah. Just use Bernoulli. Okay. Next time we're talking about something else. We stay at flow measurement, but this next video will then show you a different method. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.